Hi cuties, my name is Hanako Kozumi and this is the channel Nerdy Nekoma. Everything here is about Haiku Chat stories and fanfic. Thanks for joining us today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. And with that, welcome to today's video. On other words, the next part of Dark Intentions, my Daisuga Iwaoi Angst series. Please be aware with the content series about the content series that come with this video, which I implied violence, a bit of emotional manipulation, and it's overall just very angsty. If you don't want to watch it, that's completely fine. However, if you do want to watch it, I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Daichi frowned confused. The meeting went arguably well, despite Toka's pessimistic approach, but he stepped outside just in time to see a man leaving through the back door of the house on the opposite side of the street. He hesitated by the car door and stopped Tokaku as they were about to walk around the car to the driver's side. They looked confused but kept quiet. Taichi followed the man with his eyes until the sunlight illuminated his features perfectly despite the hood. Immediately, and more based on instinct than rational thought, he pulled Tokaku behind the car, trapping them between his arms. In other words, making the two of them look like a couple making out as he pulled up his own hood. The shock was evident in Toka's face, but something in Daichi's expression made them postpone their questions. As soon as the man was out of sight, Daichi backed away. I'm sorry. Friend of yours? They smiled teasingly, yet nervous. I don't know, but I'm sure I've seen him before. I just don't remember where. He trailed off, searching his mind for the answer. An idea popped into his mind, and he felt his heartbeat accelerating as he opened the file on his phone. As quickly as he could, he scanned through the list of pictures until he found the one he was searching for. Dark eyes and hair light skin and a fairly strong build. Here. He showed the picture to Tokaku. He was one of the suspects in Suga's case. A surveillance camera caught him. Wait, you have suspects? I thought you had nothing. In this case, yes. This was from last week. Suga and two of his friends got beat up, but there were too many people that day. No camera caught the actual crime and we could only work around the blind spot. In the end, we had too many suspects to question them all. I didn't even consider that the two cases might be related because, according to all witnesses, Namely, Suga and his friends, Hinata had been the main target. He attacked him and Kenma, while Suga got hurt in the process as he tried to step between them over and over again. Slowly, more and more pieces were added to the puzzle, but it didn't make sense. Next to him, he heard Toka's breath hitch. He hadn't even noticed how pale they have gotten. Toka... He got beat up? Oh, I forgot that you didn't. I'm sorry. They gulped. Was that why he wasn't in school? Thursday and Friday? And why he was limping? The bruises? I... Yes. He clenched his jaw. Togaka, listen to me. 
I need you to stay here while I check something. Can you do that? Wait, that is so dangerous. You're not on duty. You don't have your weapon or badge. We need to call for help. We will. I just need to check if he's there. We don't have enough evidence yet to search the house. But... Many of the suspects on the list live here. It's just suspicious that he uses this supposedly empty building. He turned around. Please, we don't have much time. He can come back any minute now. I will check and come back in the blink of an eye, I swear. If he's there, we call the station. Tokako took a deep breath. They snatched the phone from his pocket, took his hand to unlock it by using his fingerprint and quickly opened the contacts. What are you doing? Giving you my number. They placed the phone in his hand and looked him dead in the eye. Now you listen. If you at any point find yourself in a situation in which you can't talk, send me a simple X per SMS and I'll call the police and explain everything. Got it? He nodded. Thank you, Toka. Hurry! Daichi's heart was hammering against his ribs as he made his way to the backyard, always staying close to the wall. He was hesitant to go inside. Part of him still hoped to do this without breaking more laws than he already did. He searched for anything suspicious, any clue of criminal activity. It wasn't until he reached the very back of the house, the view hidden by trees from any nosy neighbor, that he heard a sound that made his heart shatter. A silent, almost an audible cry of pain that was all too familiar to the young officer. Suga! Immediately it turned silent. Just when he wanted to speak up again, a broken whisper echoed from the inside. Daichi? Yes, it's me. It's me. Relief washed over him and he could feel tears running over his cheeks as he finally heard the voice of his beloved again. The only thing keeping him alert was the pain reflected in Suga's voice. Don't worry, I'm here. I'm here. I found you. You found me. How? A sob escaped his throat. Coincidence. He wanted to laugh hysterically, so overwhelming was the emotion. I'll explain it later. First, I'll get you out of here. Wait! Ido has never gone for that long. He'll be back any second. His words were interrupted by yet another pain cry, and a sob following the whimper. Suga, are you okay? No, please, please, you have to get me. I will, but I can't, I can't lose. You need to make sure that we can flee. Be sure that he can't hurt you. His voice broke. But Daichi knew what he meant. If he rushed things now, he might end up doing more harm than good. I will send Toka an SMS. They will call the police and... Tokaka's here? Yes. 
he was interrupted by the sound of a door shut and close. A choked whimper escaped Suga's throat, and Daichi, Daichi wanted nothing more than to climb through the window and hold him, help him, save him. His fingers flew over the touchscreen of his phone. He sent the axe to Toka, and after a moment of hesitation, opened their group chat. Found him. Suga leaned against the wall, using the stress to make his lie more believable. He was sweating nervously. His heart felt like it was about to burst, and his lungs ached. It could all be written off as symptoms of his sickness. Though, if he was completely honest, he lost sight of what was actual physical pain and what was mentally inflicted a while ago. For all he knew, the wounds could be infected. Maybe his body was going into shock and the adrenaline made him function in a situation that should render his logical thinking unfunctional. Kushi dear, I'm back. He walked into the room with a plastic bag. Oh no, you look even paler than before. Here, take this. He tried feeding him a pill, but Suga turned his head away, lips pressed together. Go, oh, we already talked about it, love. You need to take this to get better. He refused. With Daichi this close by, rescue almost in reach, he wouldn't take anything. No food, no water, no medicine. Nothing from Ito. His anger flared up again, under all the fear and exhaustion, as he used the pet names that were only reserved for his boyfriends. Darling, you have to trust me, it's going to be alright. Shut up! What? I thought you made progress. Please, Koji, it's the sickness. You're not thinking clearly. He stared at Ito with utter disdain. Fuck a stupid game. You hurt almost all of my boyfriends. You almost killed them. His voice was getting louder until suddenly... Slap. A burning sensation spread on his cheek and brought no tears to his eyes. Ito stared at him, eyes widened and hands still lifted high in the air. The sound of skin slapping shook Daichi to his core, and he almost gave away his position. He silently urged Suga to stay quiet. Don't give him another reason. For a moment, the only audible sound was heavy breathing and occasional hitches in Suga's breath as he stoically fought off the tears. I'm so, so sorry. Koshi, don't say stuff like that. You know how easily I forget myself. It is just the sickness. No, no it's not. Get away. Shut up. Please, Suga, please. He was glad that the man didn't manage to break him, that he still fought, but at this moment and at this time, he feared for his life. The guy was obviously not in his right mind. His phone lit up, a short lens, and it confirmed that it was Toka. The police were almost here. I have to go. I have to go, Suga, but I promise to be back. 
just hold on a few minutes longer. Please, do it for me, and Hajime, and Toru. <laughs> I saw it, but I didn't want it to be true. Ita was shaking. Tears gathered in his eyes and he seemed to fight, conflicted within himself, debating on his next steps. Tell me that it isn't true. Tell me. Suga flinched. He had no idea if he went insane or lost his sense of survival, but instead of backing down, he continued staring at him with all the anger and hatred he could muster in his state. And Ito laughed, but it was far from his previous ones. This one was quiet and rid of any joy. You were too perfect, weren't you? I wanted you to be perfect. My perfect Koshi. His hand reached for his face, holding him in place by his jaw while his thumb tenderly caressed the quickly reddening skin where he had slapped him before. Yet, all you are is a... He pressed down on the flesh until it hurt and Suga let out a cry. The good thing is, if you already have three boyfriends, why not make it four? Or even better, if that's too many, just take me. Then it would be only one. He seemed almost euphoric at his suggestion. Suga struggled in his grip and tried backing away. Get away from me! The hand that had previously held his cheek pressed down on his mouth, while the other closed around his throat. Suga's eyes widened and he struggled harder. The lack of air seemed to activate the survival instinct he deemed lost. <laughs> you don't get a say in that matter. Fuck. He had one job. He just needed to survive until Daichi would find him. How could he mess up this close to the end? Hot tears ran over his cheeks and Ito's hands as he fought for air. Hold still! Hold still! Hold still! You are pissing me off! His grip tightened and Suga would have cried out at the suddenly intensifying pain, but he had no air to do so. Suddenly, a loud noise in the hallway caught the man's attention, and he actually let go of him. Immediately, Suga fell to the ground, coughing and breathing rapidly. It hurt. It hurt so bad. Fuck off. Go away. Leave us alone. Before Suga could understand what was going on, he was yanked up by his arm until the rope stopped him. Ito seemed to have forgotten about them because he tried a few more times to simply pull harder, inflicting more damage to his already bruised and cut wrists, before he understood and cut them off. It wasn't until then that Suga noticed the knife. He didn't saw it for long as his head was jerked backward and the cold metal pressed against his throat. He could feel the pressure increasing whenever he gulped and tried to back away right into Ito's arms. He heard voices screaming and yelling from all directions, the most frightening one, the loudest, right behind him, but he failed to understand the words. His world was in pieces. He could feel his body shutting down. He needed something to focus on. His eyes frantically searched the room until they met a pair of brown ones. They were comforting, familiar. Daichi. He couldn't actually say the words, just move his lips silently. 
Suddenly, Ichi let go of his hair, letting him fall dangerously against the knife. The blade cut him ever so slightly until the man pointed it at the officers around them. A chance. With all his remaining strength, Suga brought his slumped over and limp body up in a rapid motion, hitting Ito in the face with his head. He let go of him and Suga immediately stumbled forward. No! He sounded panicked, desperate. Without a second of hesitation or one thought regarding the police officers, he reached for him. Forgetting the knife in his hand. When they stormed the building, the only reason Dachi wasn't up front was so that someone could have an eye on him and make sure that he wouldn't do anything stupid. It was probably for the best. The moment he saw Suga with a knife to his throat, it was almost as if all his nightmares were coming true. Just much, much worse. He tried to stop his mind from creating the worst case scenarios and pictures after he returned to Toka unsuccessfully. Yet the reality was so much worse. Suga looked like he was barely holding on anymore. Their eyes met. He could see so much pain and fear in them, it felt like it was suffocating him. Suga, hold on. We are here now. Not fast enough. Not good enough. Not careful enough. Suddenly, the other fell over. Daichi's heart rate spiked, but it was nothing compared to what followed. Suga hit him in his face with his hat, managing to free himself from his grip. Without hesitation, he stumbled forward toward him. The room got into motion as the others were aiming for the aggressor while he tried to get to Suga. But he wasn't the only one. The man ran after him in desperation, letting his guard down completely as he reached for Suga's leg. The blade in his hand sunk into his thigh, creating a deep cut and tainting everything around it in a vivid red. The others acted immediately and fixated the man while Daichi finally managed to lift Suga into his arms. He couldn't understand his higher up over the chaos, but he didn't need to to know that the next thing he needed to do was bring Suga to the ambulance, parking outside. Suga! Hey, Suga, listen to me! You have to stay awake! Mid-run, he changed the teacher's position so that he could apply pressure to the wound. You made it! You hear me? You made it! Over here! She waved them over, immediately inspecting the heavily bleeding wound on his thigh. Please. The words were stuck in his throat. What was he even supposed to say anyway? Please save him? Please stop the bleeding? Please bring him back to me alive? They already knew all of that. Daichi stood in the middle of the road, lost. He felt like he could pass out any minute now. He didn't know what to do with himself now that he was out of there. He didn't... Daichi! He hadn't even gotten the chance to face them before Oikawa was already hugging him tightly. Daichi! I'm so... I... Are you okay? What? Iwaizumi appeared next to them, his eyes widened at the sight of blood all over his arms. Are you okay? Are you hurt? 
he couldn't do anything but shake his head slightly. Oikawa backed away and gulped when he saw the red on his fingers. Where? He's in there, isn't he? Daichi nodded as Iwa pointed at the ambulance. I... I couldn't... Silent tears fell from his eyes and Iwazumisa's body swaying just in time to catch him. Daichi! Hey, answer honestly. Are you alright? He shook his head, clinging to Iwazumi with all his strength, which was surprisingly, frighteningly little. Oikawa kneeled down beside them. Anything physical? Do you need medical help? He shook his head again and finally allowed himself to break down in Iwazumi's arms. The trainer pulled him closer and Oikawa joined the hack from the side. They both wanted to see Suga more than anything, but no one was willing to risk disturbing the paramedics. They were the most useful being with Daichi now. Someone would get them. Oikawa still had dry tracks of tears from the right ear on his cheeks that were quickly replaced by new ones. I'm so sorry. You put so much of the burden on yourself. I... We are sorry, Daichi. You did so much for us, yet we weren't even there to support and reassure you. I feel terrible. We were useless. Daichi didn't have the strength anymore, so he just shook his head again and pulled them closer. You are the family of Sugawara Koshi, right? They nodded. Iwaizumi slowly got up to talk to the EMT, leaving Daichi in Oikawa's arms. Yes, how is he? Stable and still alert. Nothing indicates internal injuries, though they can be completely ruled out. However, based on the injuries he described to us, and without any symptoms, scans won't be necessary at this point. Wait. So he's awake? She nodded. Yeah, and he refuses to sleep and any medication that would make him. Listen, in cases like this, we don't have to consider just the physical trauma. He is stable right now and shows no signs of anything majorly concerning. If you four have an eye on him, which for tonight means one person should be awake at all times, and you go visit your family physician first thing in the morning, we can send him home with you. Iwazumi was stunned for a second. Really? She nodded again. That was great news. He couldn't be that badly injured if they let him go. I will give you a short recap of his injuries and what you need to look out for. The slightest hint that something is wrong, I immediately want to see you at the ER or in an ambulance, understood? Yes. Please understand that we do this in the hopes that he would be more relaxed in a familiar environment. If that shouldn't be the case, please bring him to the hospital so that we can find the best option for his mental and physical health together. He nodded seriously and waved Daichi and Oikawa over as she explained everything in detail. Three might catch more than one. Koshi? Oikawa followed the paramedic inside the giant vehicle. His breath hitched at the sight of his boyfriend. This was even worse than the day he got beat up. 
Both his leg and wrists were wrapped tightly in white bandages that were bruises on his face, the darkest ones blooming on his neck, and blood stains everywhere on his clothes. The fabric around the injured leg was cut open. Hey. Suga looked exhausted and in pain, but a small smile tucked his lips upward at the sight of Toro coming for him. Ko, I don't. He took a shaky breath. Please, just take me home. He nodded and with the assistance of a paramedic, showing him what to look out for, lifted him into his arms. A shiver ran through Suga's body, but he pulled himself closer to the setter regardless, hiding his face against his chest and trying to ignore the world around him. His nails stuck almost painfully into Oikawa's skin, but the taller didn't mind. If he could take even the slightest fraction of Suga's pain and make it his own, he would. He would do anything to make him feel better and safe. Suga-san? From the corner of his eyes, he saw a flash of blue hair as Toka came into view. Their eyes widened as they looked at their friend, bloody and bruised. He needs to rest. The teacher nodded. Of course. Daichi drives home with us, so you don't have to worry about him. Go home and rest. He smiled weakly at the younger. Thank you for everything you have done. We'll keep you updated. Thank you. Take good care of him, yes? Of course. He shifted Suga into a comfortable position in his arms on the back seat, while Daichi took the passenger side and Iwazumi drove. The setter was more than grateful for Iwa's quick thinking and huddled the injured in the blankets he packed before they left. After everyone checked on Suga one last time, they started their way home. Oikawa expected him to fall asleep with all the exhaustion coursing through his body. He himself certainly felt like he could use a nap. But to his surprise, his eyes remained open, staring off into the distance. Hey, Koshi? Their reaction was immediate, not from Suga, who took a while to process the words, but from Iwa and Daichi. The latter turned around anxiously, while the trainer tensed and quickly looked at them in the mirror. Huh? You can sleep now. You are safe. We will bring you home, and no one will be ever able to harm you again. I'll make sure of it. The words were meant as soothing reassurance, but they came out as a pathetic play. To him, it sounded like nothing but an empty promise. Suga, on the other hand, smiled weakly and snuggled closer before the tears started to soak Oikawa's shirt again. Th thank you. Immediately, the taller closed his arms around the other and held him tight. This is all I wanted. He sounded so hurt and broken that it seemed to hurt the others physically. You can have it forever. He meant it. He meant every word. No matter what challenges would come their way, as a result of the recent events or not, 
he would never leave his side until he asked him to. He would be there for Kushi, no matter what. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope you liked it. It was very angsty again, but you know, it's not the final happy end, but it is the kind of happy end because they found him. Does that count? Do you forgive me now? No, of course, there will be a fourth part where we get to a little bit more fluff to make up for it and to give this ship kind of a pause from everything that happened. Um, if you liked it, consider leaving a like because it really has my channel grow. And if you want to see more of this, consider subscribing so you won't miss out on anything in the future. And now have a wonderful and amazing day. I can't wait to see you on the next part. Bye!